All right, so let's uh, I suppose. Um, so this is a, a, a perhaps an informal meeting. No, actually, no, we have a form. Like, yeah. <coughs> All right, so it is uh, April sixteenth, two thousand and fourteen. It's a meeting of the Board of Public Works in Northampton, and we are here today to largely discuss the upcoming enterprise budgets for FY15. BJ will be mad if you can't get that cassette thing going. I just yeah, want you, I want to I want to be on the record for her. Is it pleasure? She's in the building. Oh, that's why. <laughs> oh, it takes electricity. Don't pretend we're, don't pretend that, you know, everything is okay in here. Did you hear the sound in your office? It was. That was one of It was Jim. Jim did it. That Jim. Um, okay, are we all set? Sure. Okay. First order of business, a, um, the, Staff has brought forth a contract for our discussion. Um, they're proposing to spend $14,000 to replace the push camera on the glass rod that they push up the pipes. Move approval. Sorry. Second. So this is to replace an existing broken push camera that's about eight years old. Um, we've got a cost of approximately $6,000 to fix the old camera. Uh, this is a new one that will go actually 50 feet further than the old camera. This one goes up to 200 feet. It's basically to look at small lateral sur services from buildings um, and go into a catch basin and push it through, you know, sections of pipe up to 200 feet without getting the whole camera van involved and it's, it's a portable system. Come out of the sewer enterprise funds. Oh, the old one requires a... The big camera requires the van. We have a current push camera that can sit in the back of the pickup truck. This is replacing that. And this can be picked up and moved around? Yep. yep. Uh, it was sole source to Joe Cook, the city's procurement officer, because <coughs> it's a Q's camera, and that's all the cameras we have are Q's cameras. Any questions? No. All no. in favor of approving the contract? Aye. 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 Great. Uh, next. Said. We have, uh, we're going to discuss the enterprise fund budgets. So we've looked at the details in the past and um, we received a presentation on the indirect costs and those have been plugged into the rate schedules. So the final rate schedules that you see before you are as a result of the um, indirect cost allocations and all of the other budget items that we've put into the budget so far. Um, the first one is the stormwater and flood control enterprise fund budget. And at this point, it, it looks as though we'll need um, about 1.9 million in fees to balance that fund. Um, and I think maybe, Jim, did you want to go over the details of what made up that or? Well, Terry says Jim does in fact want to talk about the details. So um, there's a lot of backup that went into putting together the budget, obviously. Um, I took the liberty of putting some of the highlights um, so you can figure out what you're getting for $2 million on the whiteboard behind you, uh, Terry. Um, so some of the key sort of uh, larger priced elements in that budget involve planning for vehicle replacements. Uh, there's $100,600 in the budget for that. Um, there's a catch basin dewatering uh, operation that we need to fill with here at Base 1 to, uh, to deal with catch basin uh, cleanings that need to be dealt with in a certain way. Um, we have a drain replacement line item in the in the budget that's $500,000. At this point, the projects that we're, we're looking at funding with that money include uh, Hinkley Street drainage, which is about 255,000, working on drainage improvements, uh, drainage and improvements down by the levee system uh, on Eastern Ave. That's gonna be on the order of 150 to 200,000. And we're working on a new outfall design that we just started that's associated with the Hinkley Street project. We don't have an estimate for that 
uh, project at this point, but those projects would be coming out of the drain replacement account. On flood control, if you look through the through the sheets, that you would see that we have two hundred thousand dollars allotted for uh, the Hockenham Road pump station um, rehabilitation or replacement feasibility. Um, so that that study is in the flood control side of the budget. Um, on the capital debt side, we've got three projects slated um, that show up under um, under the capital side. There, and it's. Uh, for the upcoming fiscal year, it's $126,750. For debt-related costs associated with levy certifications that are required by the Corps, Connecticut River levy maintenance, also required by the Corps, and the River Road Retaining Wall Project, which was just awarded the FEMA grant. So those are the, uh, those are the value of those projects. And then if you were to go through all the details on the staffing and OM costs, we went staff person by staff person um, for for assignments related to the work in this in this in this new division, and the OM costs that we had now were basically related to um, increases um, from the pending EPA MS4 permit and other OM costs that we would have normally uh, routinely paid paid for through the general fund. So that gives you kind of an overview. The structure of the budget is really what we've been talking about for the better part of two years. Um, I went back just for the fun of it to see um, the end of 2013 when we were running around the city telling people how much it was going to cost for the Enterprise Fund. I've got a slide in front of me from the September 2013 presentation that Terry did and we were just a little over two million at that point for fiscal year 2015. So I feel like the numbers are a lot more justifiable because we went through every number a lot in a lot more detail than we did in 2013 as we built the budget from the bottom up. So um, we feel pretty good about the budget and where it's at and um, it's just slightly under two million but everything that's in there uh, are things that we've been talking about for, for quite a period of time. Uh, Jim, <coughs> Hinkley Street's really going to be an FY16. Uh, is, is the quarter of a million dollars for Hinkley Street in this fiscal year for... The Hinkley Street could be bid... Some of that construction could start in the next fiscal year. So we're missing this construction season, but it, it could be in the next fiscal year. So if we were to bid it in the wintertime and we started construction in, say, April or May, that would be FY15. So some of that money would need to be available. But just for discussion purposes, we're planning to borrow all of this money. Um, but we're not going to spend, in this fiscal year, we're unlikely to spend $500,000 outright. We won't spend it, but we would like to sign contracts to spend it in that fiscal year. We can't sign a contract unless we have the funding source available. Okay. Um, but we'll get back a million dollars approximately, actually more than a million, a million two of this, which would go back in, which would we basically repay that debt. That's correct. One we've touched on before, and I still don't quite see how it's going to work, and that is um, how in the first year we get a full year's worth of revenue when the bills start going out in July, and, and some people probably don't get their first bill until the third month of the quarter, maybe. And so if you look at the end of the year, some people won't be getting their, they won't be paying their their bill in FY15. So once the program gets going, I understand how all those lags work and, and it works for water and sewer, but I don't see how we get a full almost $2 million of revenue in the first year. So I'm just concerned that if we commit to spending all this money that we may not have the revenue to cover. 
But we should spend as much as we have to cover. Um, and most of the individuals that are going to be working for the storm drains are 66% allocated to the sewer enterprise fund. Mm -hmm. So they already have a funding mechanism in place. A third of their funding is going to be funded through the storm drain enterprise fund. So as long as, I mean, we could run a deficit initially, obviously, because the revenue is going to lag um, behind our expenses. But by the end of the year, and certainly we've staffed two SMEOs for the storm drain mm -hmm. division. I don't know that they're going to be on staff um, July 1st. I guess that's a question. So there might be some flexibility in how we spend the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't so much worried about what happened during the year as well, by the time we got to the end of the year, would we have a full year worth of revenue? Um, it, it just seems to me like it's not likely we will. But, but then if there's some flexibility in the budget, maybe we can take care of it that way. And, and plus, for example, Hinckley Street will be large. Well, that's, that's kind of what got me thinking about it, yeah. just as I can. The other, the other questions or observations I have, um, I was comparing the, some of the changes between the, the first uh, budget we received on March 21st and the one we just, we have now. And um, I noticed that the biggest change was uh, debt and interest is significantly less than we thought it would be back in March. And I recall that um, we're only going to cover new debt in this fund now, and the old debt's being covered by the general fund. That's right. So that's, that explains one change. And then if you, up under storm drain OM, there was like a $30,000 increase over March, the March budget. I know that that's a, I was curious to see if anyone knew off the top of their head what I believe that we didn't have the figures for um, disposal of street sweepings and uh, catch basin things at that point. <coughs> that is a dollar value plugged in, if I recall correctly. It is, it's 30000 okay. It was the number that we didn't have at that time. Okay, okay, well, oh, good. Well, that makes sense. Any other questions? No. Um, could you just walk through the uh, staffing plan? Just big picture. I don't have the big picture. So the big picture of the staffing plan is the existing sewer and drain division. And what we've done is supplement it with two SMOs, special motor equipment operators, for that. Division. And is that the sort of person we would need okay. to run the vector truck? Vector yeah, truck and street sweepers, copies. things of that nature. Do you want copies of the personal right. services spreadsheet? No, just explain. I'm looking people. There's a long list of people that go into this, uh, and, and it might be easy to look at the list. We have almost the, the majority of, of uh, the, the majority of persons personnel services on in this enterprise fund are split between various funds. Um, some of them are storm drain and uh, some of them are you and sewer. Some of some of the engineers are like me and uh, others in the engineering division that are split up between water enterprise, sewer enterprise, general fund. Um, the same thing with the clerks. Uh, the clerks were divided up um, into different enterprise funds or general fund based on their responsibilities. Um, so uh, the mechanics uh, were also split up based on the uh, amount of work they do on specific types of vehicles. They were set up that way. Um, Ned's time. Um, so we basically went through everybody that would do work within the division and then allocated their time in a way that made sense based on um, previous experience and what we know. Um, and then, this, then on the flight control side, um, there were, there were three staff members that were um, put into this new utility at 10% of their time based on historical amounts of uh, activity that they've done related to the, the Hockenham Road uh, pump station. So it was kind of built from the ground up. Um, we don't really, don't really have an organizational chart, but this sheet that uh, is going around sort of shows how we, how we built this particular fund from, like I said, from the ground up trying to figure out what specific responsibilities were for each staff member. 
So, for example, currently in flood control, we use uh, wastewater treatment plant employees during the day in a sense of no charge to the old flood control methodology. Yes, Are they now being separately billed? You'll see that on the back side of the sheet there that they are billed at 10% of their salary. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the straight time because overtime is covered by the budget. This is assuming that the plant would be operational approximately 30 days out of the year. It's an assumption based on historic. Mm -hmm. Jerry? Yes. Uh, a while ago, I took a look at the, the top section of this list. So all the positions until you see the heading that says allocated. So I, that seemed to me to be the, the core of the staff that's out in the field doing the work. Mm -hmm. And it, although they're split one third and two thirds in different ways, it looked to me like there were five full-time equivalents in that whole group, including the two new hires. So for example, there are two foremen that spend a third of their time on this. So that's two thirds of a full-time equivalent. And then there are the two new positions. And if you work your way down through, it seems like a the equivalent of five people working full time. So I looked at it. Does this raise any questions or? Okay. So this is sort of the first year I think we've discussed this in the past that we've actually put out all of the allocated positions where they show up in the budget. We used to do it through the indirect cost schedule. 66% mm -hmm. of the sewer division employees in the general fund were allocated to the sewer enterprise fund through indirect cost schedules. So all of that was taken out of the indirects and then allocated directly into the divisions where they actually perform the work. So it's much clearer to see who's contributing work effort to which enterprise fund mm -hmm. by putting the, together the, the budget this way. It's a much better system, right? I, mean, I think so. Drilled in, it's a lot, yeah. a lot more transparent. So, so at our next meeting, um, absent any other questions, we would recommend that the uh, mayor, we would basically recommend this budget to the mayor, would eventually take it to the city council. No questions now doesn't mean you can't have more questions next week, but any other questions about stormwater? If you do feel strongly about changing some of the numbers in the budget, if you could give me that feedback ahead of time, because we are trying to get the budget documents together for presentation to City Council. Mm -hmm. So any heads up that I can give to City Hall in terms of any changes after this meeting would be helpful as soon as possible. Takes the fun out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so broadly speaking, what we're doing here is, and I have to admit slightly to my surprise, um, we're going into this as if the MS4 permit is going to be available shortly. Uh, from my conversations with Jim and Ned, I would say that um, we're going to get right after operating in the way that we anticipate the MS4 permit will require that we operate. Uh, and there's some setup. They're working to get um, an asset management database set up so we can track individual mm -hmm. storm drains. When was it last visited? What was the depth of the sediment? Um, I think that's a philosophical choice, but I think it, it, to me it feels justifiable. Uh, I think we need to. I mean, I, we've got one chance to set the budget right, and you know, unfortunately, the federal government doesn't care where you, when, and where you get the money. You, yeah. you have to perform when they give you the permit. And fortunately, things have worked out, so we have the opportunity to set the right budget. Yeah, you know, we have some discretion as to how we spend the money, but I think we need to set the budget the way they've got it prepared. Yes, Chris. I'd agree with that. Um, I think that. Um, there's sufficient shock value with what's going on in the community right now um, with regard to, ins you know, instituting a new, 
new thing. I think the idea that um, we might lowball the figure and then come back and take another fight next year, um, you know, two years in a row would be extremely unpopular. Um, so that you know, our best efforts in 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 accuracy at this point, assuming what we know about what we think we know, as Donald Rumsfeld would say, um, uh, is 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 the right way to go. You know, Donald Rumsfeld every year sends a letter to the IRS saying that he has no idea if his tax return is accurate because the law is so Byzantine that who could possibly know? Could he get a copy of that for all of us? <laughs> so that would be a known unknown. I think I think that yeah. tells us one thing about Donald Rumsfeld, which is he makes too much freaking money. <laughs> um, all right. Well, so if that's okay, we'll we'll assume this is approximately correct. And I have one yes. question: When is the uh, MS4 permit expected to become law? The last that we heard was that a new draft would be issued in April. Uh, and we don't know how long it will take <coughs> EPA to turn that around into a final permit. Um, I've said before that a lot of the things in the MS4 permit, we don't agree necessarily with everything in there, but we would, we're obligated to comply uh, with it. But there's a lot of things in there that it really are best management practices for a modern day public works operation to be doing. Some of these things which we are not doing. So those are the types of things that we would like to implement, whether the permit comes out or not. Yeah. Um, we wouldn't rush off necessarily to spend a lot of money on things required by a permit that doesn't exist, but where it makes sense and we can make changes to the benefit of the department, then those are the things that we would we would try to tackle. Right. Well, we also have uh, obligated to do work on the flood control system, which is nothing to do with MS4, right? That's correct. Okay. Which one would you like to do next year? Uh, water Enterprise. So, again, I took the indirects that were allocated you know, to the Water Enterprise Fund and plugged that number in. And as a result, um, unless the rate was either increased slightly or not increased at all, we, we generated a profit um, in this fund. And the board had previously decided that they would be funding some of the projects through reductions in fund balance. So that no longer made sense to me to actually fund certain projects through the fund balance when, in fact, we were generating a profit. Um, so I think we had $1 million in water improvements. Uh, that were funded by retained earnings, $1 million in Upper Roberts Meadow Dam removal, funded by retained earnings, and $500,000 in Roberts Meadow Brooks Slope st Stabilization, funded by retained earnings. So I decreased the um, $1 million in water improvement to $700,000. And then that actually changed the rate from 5.47 to 5.58. So I decreased the um, undesignated fund balance as a source of funding for FY15 uh, enterprise fund. And that was the change. Going out in future years, um, you can see that the, at this point in the schedule, the rates appear to be very stable. Um, and that's because there is no real capital plan that's been worked into the schedule so far because the capital plans are so nebulous at this point, it didn't seem you indicated some desire to only have built into the schedule capital projects that were, that were actually you had determined you wanted to move forward with. So there's there's nothing in future years at this point until that capital project schedule is more solid and can be presented to the board for pr approval. So the concept is basically to use new cash rather than old retained earnings to pay for some of these capital projects? And then moving out, like Anne Marie said, we don't have a capital plan for future years, and we didn't want to fictitiously put projects in there that we weren't hadn't been fully vetted. So some of the other changes that I made to the schedule you might not notice, but um, we had <coughs> in previous years and in, in our 
previous presentation, we included $7 million in the new facility construction expenses funded through a bond issuance beginning in FY17. It looks as though that's not a realistic projection for any new DPW facility. It's not built into the city's general fund for funding, so it didn't feel as though the enterprise funds could move forward without the general fund support. So that was taken out of FY17 and then plugged into FY19, which looks like a more realistic time frame for that project to be considered. Have we actually set, set, uh, set any money aside for the facility? No. So we talked about it in previous years, but nothing's right. actually put aside. It's always been a fiscal year or two ahead of us and as, a, as a projected rate. Okay. So the $700,000 in water improvements will be like piping, pipe replacement, we have projects of Winslow Avenue, the Pine Street Bridge Crossing Project, Constant Pleasant Street, uh, Hinkley Street might be into construction towards the end of that 515, but there is a total of 1.518 million that we had looked at back in the early March through the budget meeting. And we decided to hold off on the reservoir improvements at that meeting also, which was um, about five million dollars worth of work on Waverly West Waverly, mm -hmm. and uh, the board moved to go forward with cash for the Upper Roberts Meadow Reservoir Dam removal and the Roberts Meadow Brooks Slope Stabilization Project. So, is the permitting coming along with uh, removing the dam, the Upper Roberts Meadow Dam? It is. So we're proposing that construction or destruction may start next year? In the next fiscal year, um, possibly in the winter time. Do we know if they're going, um, this is perhaps off topic, but do we know if they're going to uh, ease, ease up on the requirements for the silt? We're in the middle of discussions with that, with those agencies right now about that. Yeah. That's, that's the plan. We're hoping uh, we'll take a different route. Could yes, we have a little bit more detail on that? The silt project, what, what's, the, what's the problem? So the problem is that the conceptual plan for um, removal of dredged soils from behind the dam, uh, the original plan that was recommended by the agencies involved, taking the sediment from behind the dam, sluicing it down a large pipe, clearing a five acre area um, adjacent to the, uh, the stream. So it was riverfront protection area. We need to cl clear five acres, build a big basin, sluice the sediments down there, allow them to dry, scoop them out and get rid of them. Our concern, the city's concern from the very beginning is that <clears throat> that, re that represents a lot of disturbance in a, in a riparian zone to a stream. And we didn't believe it was the best thing to do. Since the early efforts on the permitting started, all the agencies have sort of come around realizing that that's probably not the best way to deal with it. So they're working with us to determine ways that would be more acceptable to manage the sediment that didn't involve clearing this five acre area and building uh, a temporary sediment pond there. And it basically is going to, at this point, we're looking at partial dredging and partial movement of sediment downstream into a four bay that would be constructed in the middle of its reservoir. So rather than clearing a five acre area, mm -hmm. would actually set up something within the inlet to the middle of its reservoir to catch some of the material there. So it's a balance of environmental impacts that the different agencies are looking at. <clears throat> we're not sure exactly, we just sent some information to the Corps and the other agencies with a, a revised proposal and we're waiting for feedback from them on it. And the 500,000 is also, is that, the, is that the piece that MEMA is going to give us the 75% the reimbursement? The, uh, the slope stabilization, is that what we're calling the problem south on the downstream from the Santee Beach? Beach? Yes. So we'll get back 400, 375 or whatever it is. I think it's a 340-something thousand is their obligation to us at this point.
And FEMA is still reviewing the Upper Roberts Meadow dam removal. I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but there is still a potential chance of a 75% of that $1.3 million in costs, or about a million dollars coming back. Any questions about the Water Enterprise Fund? So we're not going to use any? Oh, go ahead. Well, I've got a couple of observations, but maybe that's where you're headed to. The, the first budget we looked at, we were, with the preliminary numbers that we had, we were looking at a 4 plus percent increase in the rate, and now we're, with these changes, we're looking at a, about a 2 percent increase in the rate which to me seems much more reasonable. Um, but to hold the rate increase at 2%, we're still using $2.2 million from our undesignated fund balance to achieve that low rate increase. So I, if I've got that correct. So I think the, the public needs to understand that we're doing a lot of things we need to do to try to keep the system um, current, but we're doing it working off of a balance that we already have as opposed to raising the rates. Um, and I think that makes sense, but um, we can't do that forever. We could do it for one more time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like sooner than forever. <laughs> so when the capital plans come out, we'll have a better understanding how the projected rates will be going, going sure. forward. Yep. We're hoping to tackle that later this summer into fall. Mm -hmm. And do you do you think it seems okay to? Uh, I mean, we're in a sense we're keeping the rate slightly depressed, artificially depressed. Mm -hmm. does, does that seem reasonable? I think it does, especially since um, we've instituted the stormwater fee mm -hmm. this year, which is a big impact on the residents. So I. And we have an eleven cent increase this year, which is higher than last year anyway, as I re read it. It is, right. Yeah. That's right. No, I, I think it's a, a reasonable compromise recognizing all the, the expenses that the water system is facing, right. um, and yet um, some sensitivity to the overall impact of all the rates that we deal with. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, we'll be looking for final approval of the rate increase and the, and the budget at our next meeting. Ann, what do you want? Well, I guess the sewer uh, enterprise fund would be allowed to create a next rate schedule to take a look at. And this is sort of the same uh, methodology was used to develop this rate schedule as the water rate schedule. We plugged in the um, direct and indirect number, which um, then affected the, the rates in a way that I took a look at the projects that had orig originally been determined to be funded through the fund balance. Um, we had 150,000 VFD bypass funded through the fund balance transfer and $550,000 thickener building upgrades funded through <coughs> the, um, the fund balance transfer. And I took the thickener building and put it into um, a capital line item to be funded by the rates rather than through the fund balance. We'd be looking at, a, at about a 2% increase in sewer enterprise fund rate schedule. I, I again took out the DPW facility out of FY17, moved that out to FY19. And the rates again look to be fairly levelized and the same explanation, um, the capital program is not put into any of the budget line items, not into any anticipated debt at this point. I think there is one item that was um, a $2.6 million emergency generator switch gear replacement is in the uh, rate schedule as funded through a bond issuance beginning in FY16. So really the, the greatest changes in this schedule are the indirect costs and the reallocation of the Fickner building as a capital project instead of being 
funded through the rate schedule instead of being funded through the fund balance. And the, the million dollar sewer line replacement. Carried over. Funded through fund balance at my 14. So what, do we have a schedule for what's proposed? I don't know the schedule offhand. I know engineering is working on it. I believe it's gonna be bid this summer for summer fall construction. We just started permitting that sewer line right now, and there's a, an easement issue that needs to be resolved, and there was a private way issue as well for this new intersection. So this is right, basically yeah. coming down, uh, what is that? <coughs> Bradford Street. Bradford yeah. Street. Yeah. Extension, as, or Bradford Street North, as we know it. And we did, when we discussed this years ago, this was the idea being here that we have reached our capacity in the industrial park. We're at capacity and in order to allow coke to grow further and to allow for anything else to happen up there anybody we're pretty much at capacity certain certain times certain during peak flows the pipe is pretty much full so we're in a, we're in a bad way there so we're trying to get this project going and okay it's been a little complicated because of easements and private ways and cross-country permitting and tribes with an interest in the history of the industrial park. The, the new pump station is sized, however. So from the pump station to the to the treatment plant, that system's fine, right? Plenty of capacity there. That is the Cadillac Escalade of pump stations. Oh. You could drop this building into that pump station. Maybe we should. Or we should be there. The <laughs> facility for us. I want to it. I, Ned told me uh, they, they brought in a it was a 100 ton crane. That yeah, was a big crane, Davenport out of Greenfield. To, to lower these huge concrete, uh, basically it's a rectangle, open top and bottom. They drop them down, first one onto a foundation, and then a little pile of them. It's huge. The old one was like this big. It's a tube. And the, the new one's, oh, it's at least as large as this room, I think. No, it's not that large. No? Well, there are no. two of them, maybe between the two of them. You can play cards in there. there there's Same one that, there's one that the, the men can get down to work on the pumps. There's a the lunch room. In one of them? Oh, there's yeah. a lunch room in yeah. the thing? A break room. There's a <laughs> Tiffany lamp in there. Oh, no. Some other things. Microwave. You got it on the refrigerator. Maybe you can buy a window per from Perhaps the for the record, we might want to make this more factual. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it does have an auto control system, which the old one did not have. That would, make the, that would be factual. And that would make lunch break. And more auto control palatable. system will make the lunch break for the neighbors more palatable. Okay. So anyway, that pump station's fine. All right. So I just want one more serious sure. question, although it's simple. So I'm assuming this pipe is just a gravity flow pipe. That's all it is. Yeah. Okay. I had a couple yes. questions, observations. So a while ago, I posed a few questions to the staff. And I, as I look back, I think the only real question was I was. We had talked about doing a study on the emergency generator to see what our options are, mm -hmm. and um, I couldn't see where that money was, but they confirmed that it's in the treatment OM line. There's there's an allowance for engineering for a number of projects, and that includes the emergency generator. So it'll be in the architectural mm -hmm. engineering line item, Mike. Yep. Um, so, uh, the, I just felt better knowing that that money was built in here somewhere. And then the other one is uh, a similar observation that I made on the 
on the water enterprise fund, although to a much smaller degree, we're maintaining this 2% rate increase by using $150,000 from our uh, available fund balance. Mm -hmm. And that was for the BFD bypass? Right. right. So if, if based on our projected need expenses, we'd have a higher rate increase if it weren't for the fact that we we're using some of the funds that we already have. And am I right? We still we're still working on the RFP for the generator study. I'm I'm um, I, I grow increasingly wary of uh, doing everything to the nth degree. A generator capable of running absolutely everything compared to one that just gets essential services done and the issue of do we need enough stamp backup power to go for a week or is that realistic or is it three days um, I was telling that I, I think nuclear plants um, aren't required to go a week are not required? If in the event of a power outage, I don't think their backup systems are designed to go for uh, more than a week. And so it, as we're looking at this, I hope the RFP kind of explores, gives us uh, some range of options. Um, do we need backup power sufficient to run everything, including the coffee maker? That's one question, or can we can it be focused on essential service, essential mechanical parts of those plant? And, and then what time frame, over what time frame? It's kind of an, it's a risk management question, mm -hmm. I think. Well, wouldn't the time frame be related to? Maybe that's just fuel. Fuel delivery, yeah. The, the critical needs of the plant that aren't met right now, the fact that we lose our sludge, uh, sludge uh, uh, capacity, after three to four days is currently what's happening down there. So power goes up for a day or two is not a major issue, but when it starts stretching out to three or four or five days, we can't process sludge, and things start getting backed up quite a bit. But even in October of 11, whenever, when was that snowstorm? And that was Halloween 2011. Was it out, how long was it? I believe it was out for a day and a half. Um, it was one of the critical facilities that came online, right. like the water treatment plant, the hospital, <coughs> different tiers that they pushed for first. So it's just an interesting discussion. I just I hope the RFP kind of is written in such a way that we'll get some a range of. There's also a study study coming up by the city through Central Services, which was done by the Rivermore Group, which is about energy resiliency in the city and long-range planning, what we should be looking for for extended outlook out outages in the city, too. I think they looked at a 3, 5, and 10, and 20-day outage, if I remember correctly. So that city should be out in the next week or two, and their suggestions of how we build a resiliency back in the city with uh, PV arrays, um, battery backup systems, and additional generator support in the city. Um, Going to what Terry was asking, I, to me, when you look at the size of the system, what kind of connected loads you're going to put on a backup generator, or how big is the fuel tank, all those things, there's a first cost that's going to be, you've decided to put in a generator and connect it. So there's a, you mobilize, there's labor, there's equipment, you buy all that stuff. So then to go to the next level is going to be a premium or an adder to that. And I think that's, I think that, I, I kind of go in the other direction. How much more would it cost to have sort of the the 10-day version as opposed to the 3-day version? And and on the fourth day, you're not going to care that you What's spent that extra premium? money. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is it a 5% premium to go to a slightly larger size generator or a slightly larger fuel tank, or is it a 10%? I don't think it's a... If you if you go from 4 days to 10 days, I don't think it's going from 4 million to 10 million. You know what I mean? I, so I think that... It's certainly worth looking at. 
cost benefit aspect. Exactly, but I, I, I would hate that we would decide that because nuclear power plants aren't required to go beyond a certain number of days, that we wouldn't think about that in our own way. And you waited until he was out of the room? Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 have some com I have some comments that I've... Well, he's I'm, bigger I'm, than I am. I'm actually... <laughs> if I was sitting where Mike is, I might be more bold. I have some comments that I've, I'm holding off on until he gets back, because I, I think that the nuclear power plant argument is spurious, um, because what they're talking about is... We can't, we can't deliver to you power. That means your refrigerator is going to run. That that's a problem, but it's not it's not an issue. It doesn't it doesn't in, involve the kind of backup of service that you guys are talking about. It's 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 a front end thing. And 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 the second part is um, having had some experience on on how um, federal regulations are generated. Um, Anything that has to do with what the federal government requires is almost certainly the low end of the spectrum as far as what's, what's, what's reality. Um, because the nuclear power industry has argued strenuously that we don't want to have to do this. And have done so in conjunction with the other power industries because they're, they're not unique. And it, it, it has to do with, you know, what we bill our, our, our customers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I, I, would, I would expect that any standard that the nuclear power industry is held to is at the low end of the spectrum, absent the safety argument, where I think they're pretty good. But as far as rate, rate increases and, and, and service providing, um, I think they're probably at the, at the low end. Um, you got back just in time while you were gone. There have been several aspersions cast on your nuclear regulatory concept. Oh, including so the motion. They're not the gold and standard, you say? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Gary I, made a good point that it's cost benefit analysis. Yeah. You, it need, if you're going to pay the extra amount for the coffee maker, but it only costs 1% more, maybe what I'm rephrasing. So the, the issue is yeah. really, it's, it's sort of complicated, as you would imagine. Sure. Um, and the four day versus 10 day is mainly related to fuel. The problem that we have is that we have a plant that we're going to blow up in the next 10 years and totally rebuild. It's going to have new motors, new power requirements, and probably lots of other things that we don't even know at this point what those are going to be. So we're going to try to do a study and try to anticipate what the power needs are now, maybe yeah. what they will be in the future. Fair enough. Gary had alluded to the fact that you can buy a much what you can buy a larger generator with a with little premium in cost for the value of the generator, and that's that would be one of the things. But I think your point, Terry, is that we're going to really look at the options here and look at the cost and see what we're going to get. And we definitely need to do that because we're trying to build in now emergency power supply for a plant that will not be the plant that we're going to have in 10 years. So options would be good. Indeed. <laughs> And we won't follow the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. No. Thank you. Chris, we'll call it something <laughs> else. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Happy. It's, 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 it's what uh, Bismarck said, which is, you know, you don't, the, the politics is like sausage. You don't want to see how it's made. And, and <laughs> I thought that was Tip O'Neill. Yeah, well, he, 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 yeah. he paraphrased yeah, Bismarck. Yeah. Yeah. We'll say, local we'll politics say, is sausage. <laughs> we say similar things down at the wastewater plant. <laughs> 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 uh, um, so, any Mike, you're you're all set. I am all set for the sewer budget and proposed rates. So our last one is the Landfill Enterprise Fund, where the only change here was the increase in sticker revenue that would be generated by a $50 um, switch from 25 to 50 right, We did add a couple items to the expense side from oh, that's the version right. I have. 10000 for mm -hmm. uh, the reuse, reuse mm -hmm. committee. And the uh, indirects went up a little. So we had a spirited discussion. We did. Talk to Terry about that. We had a spirited discussion about increasing the vehicle permit fee next year versus, um, if you guys talked about it, maybe you want to talk about it. So we had a, 
as Jim said, the spirit of discussion among staff and some staff felt that my recommendation to the board was maybe not right and the board might want to reconsider that to keep it at a current $25 rate versus uh, the concern is that um, more people leave and this will force the issue into closing down the enterprise fund or losing it. I personally don't think this thing will ever shut down and it's going to need, we need to provide something to the citizens in Northampton. But do we do so? Do we continue to do it at a loss? Well, I don't think that's invalid, but I do think that we want to know what's going to happen if we do raise rates. And so we're looking for data as much as anything else to help us make decisions going forward. Right. I think the issue is if you lose customers, you may, you may, you may never get them back, right? So we could raise the rates, but even if we decided in the future to drop them again, once you lose the customers that we have here, we probably won't get them back, so that's certainly a factor. Um, and then the other thing um, is that we felt that keeping the, if you kept the rate the same, you would benefit from having a, another full year of financial information for the system um, to provide more information about how it's running. Because we changed the bag fees and we made other changes this year, we look at this, the, the data from this year, um, it would be helpful to, it may be helpful to have another year's worth of data. I guess that's the only thing, without changing any of the variables. So those were two of the things that we discussed. And clearly it can go any way. I mean, I understand the board's desire to reduce the deficit. Um, I think the mayor's opinion is that there's a fair amount of free cash available to cover that deficit. So if you went through another year to get additional data to see how the system is functioning, you could, you could do that. Um, clearly it's not a, it's a difficult decision to make, but there, there were some factors that we wanted to bring to the table again um, before you make the vote. And also it gives you more time to give a thoughtful sort of pause to see where you want to go with the transfer station. You, you've kind of been working on the Stormwater Enterprise Fund this year and that's taken up a lot of time. I don't know that you know the landfill has discussion has been fully vetted at this point to make changes for fiscal year um, 2015. And certainly because you have a um, retained earnings amount that can support a loss again in 2015 to take another year to gather the data and then to make thoughtful decisions on what, how you want to change it. Do you want to increase the vehicle sticker price? Is that the best sort of solution? Um, how competitive would that be? I mean, you looked a little bit sort of um, kind of superficially at those, at those items, but take a real in-depth analysis and make a, a thoughtful decision going forward, it seems as though that's not an unwise path to take. Chris? So I've become more militant about this in the last the last week. Um, <laughs> Which way? <laughs> Up or down? I'm waiting um, to find out. <laughs> um, first off, I think that um, the idea that transfer station or, or, or solid waste, however we want to frame it, has to be operated at a profit is, 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 is a non-argument and, and I won't support it. Um, secondly, um, I think that if we want to increase revenues, um, we decrease participation by increasing the annual, f annual fee. Um, if we, uh, it, the smart way to go about it is to increase the, the bag fee. Um, because what that will do is encourage people to reduce the number of bags they put in the trash. And that will help us with our other sort of solid waste initiatives. Um, and I can't remember what the third point was, but I had one. Um, uh, anyhow, I, 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 had, I had spec this out and I had planned to raise it on, on at the Wednesday meeting when we when we when we did the final vote, but um, uh, I'm I'm really reluctant, uh, and I think the one year layover is is particularly given the fact. Oh yeah, that I remember what it is. Um, we're looking at um, increases in the two enterprise funds that currently exist. Um, we're creating a new enterprise fund, um, which will. So I think we have to look at the overall burden on, on citizens. Um, I, don't think, I don't think that when we look at the city's fees, uh, we can do any of them in a vacuum. And I think we did a really good job of that last year when we, when we um, uh, attempted to minimize the increases in the sewer and water fees 
in the anticipation of the creation of the stormwater thing. I mean, we, we consciously did that. Uh, we knew this was coming, so maybe this is not the year to increase um, this one fund that we're not entirely sure how we're going to deal with in the future, because we're already going to be... so. Because um, I'm already thinking about the op-ed that I'm going to have to write about, um, as a member of the Board of Public Works, what we did this year with regard to, um, you know, the fees on citizens. Because, I mean, I was, <laughs> you know, I, I, was at, I was at the vets the other day, and I'm listening to this guy, and I didn't get into it because I had literally three dogs with me. Um, but I'm listening to this guy talking about the 400, 400, I mean, he, he's so poorly understood the way the new stormwater fee was going to be implemented. He thought it was going to be $99 four times a year. Okay. We have so much public education to do on this. And and um, I, I just think that this may not be the right moment for, for this change. Um, I think in the future we're going to have to, and I, I think the broader discussion is, is the way we have to go about it. And it's a political discussion about what the, what the function of the city is with regard to managing waste and that kind of thing. Um, but this may not be the year to do it, given all the other things that are going on around it. So I'm going to make that case again on Wednesday. The data we had on the, on the sticker feed for other communities was very helpful. Yeah. And, and you know, that, that gives us plenty of room. If, if that's all you're looking at. But the question I have is do other, what, what are the other bank charges other communities are uh, charging? Or, or my impression is some of them are just free. It, it, it's the annual permit is the total price, but I, but I don't know. I think you'll find that it varies all over the map. I know in West Hampton it's 50 cents for a small bag, a dollar for a large bag with a $60 vehicle permit fee. Um, I don't know what the other communities are charging for bags. Just their sticker to, programs. I'm sorry. And I do know that there's only other in only up two other communities in the state of Massachusetts that, that only have an annual fee and don't have a bag fee. Oh, so the everybody has bag some kind of bag universal. fee. Pretty much. So Williamsburg is one of those. And Conway. Uh -huh. well, I, I would. Where do you live? Williamsburg. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what do you pay there? Sixty dollars. But no bag, I, I, no bag fee. I got a bag in my car. Can you take it? <laughs> <laughs> and does the uh, your general fund support that? Oh, I, I'm not the financial administrator. <laughs> <laughs> but you, <laughs> just guess. <laughs> Imagine so. Yeah, they must. But that would that would actually be an interesting piece of information to to have, which is you know in these other communities with the with the much higher fees, whether that offsets the total cost of the program. Well, I was wondering, how many bags do we sell? Here we go. Approximately. Is it on that document? Would a 15 cent increase in the bag fee get us to where the, leave the uh, initial fee low and then just slightly increase the bag fee? Would that? I'm not sure exactly. We could figure the numbers out. Part of the problem that we had when we raised the bag fee was that there was a big run on bags because people wanted to get right. them while they were still cheap before the prices, we dealt the one up by 50% or whatever yep. it was. So we sold a whole bunch of bags, right. and I think there's a lot of bags just sitting in, in my garage. House. Yeah, <laughs> for example. So we should raise the <coughs> fee, the simple fee to $75, because people will want to use their bags. That's one way of looking at it. The problem with raising the bags, of course, is that um, it's not it's not a fixed revenue, right? It's tied to the sure. residents purchasing something. So you bank on what the projection for that revenue would be, and you may not achieve it. Well, and, and it, but that goes back to my general point, which is that part of the reason that you raise the bag fee is to reduce the amount of stuff that goes in into the system, to get people thinking about other ways of recycling and that kind of thing. And and <coughs> as long as we're we're looking at this discussion as revenue driven then yes, that makes sense. But um, I prefer to look at it more sort of holistically, which is in, in, the, in, the, in the greater scheme, um, we want to reduce the amount of stuff that we're putting in the landfills. I mean, just last week we voted um, to, you know, endorse a proposal to reduce, um, you know, polystyrene going into the landfills. Um, I think that 
I think that part of the function of, of this board is to look at what's smart in the long term, not just revenue-wise, but, but as a community. And so that's why I would advocate rather if you're if you you know if you're looking at raising revenues, it, it's like cigarette taxes. We don't want people to smoke, so we raise we raise taxes on on cigarettes. It has the added advantage of raising revenue for the government, but 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 it's it's a it's a it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's what we call a sin tax. You know, um, I think the 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 front end fee um, for for disposal. Um, is less representative of that kind of behavior modification, if that's what we want to do, um, than it is on putting a price on bags. Um, so, yeah, you, you, you know, your point, the point you were making, Jim, is exactly the point I'm making, which is um, we want to reduce the number of bags that go in there. So, anyhow. Well, but, but I think we can afford a year at the lower fee. We can afford the deficit while we get a better feeling for the potential to raise the tax. Oh, yeah. I'm absolutely with you on that. Well, totally. Okay. Just, just to question, how will we learn anything if we don't raise? I mean, well, if we, we do nothing, we learn nothing. <laughs> we know that the raise is going to remove some customers. Right. But, but, but if, I'm, if I'm correct, the spirit of discussion uh, involves some proponents of doing nothing. And it seems to me we learned for, nothing. For a year. Yeah. And we, what do we learn that we haven't already learned in the past year? Is my, is my question. What would be the, right. w where's the, the takeaway from that? The takeaway in part would be related to the bag sales and, w and what, what we would actually be seeing for revenue. Because that number was shot to heck last year because of the run we had on the bags and they were increased. That would be one thing, but I guess the overall, you know, the, and then the overall thing is just a lot, you know, you're lost in customers that you would never get back, and whether you're concerned about that. <coughs> Where are you? Uh, yeah, I go was ahead. before you, so. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be curious. Um, I totally agree, and I, and I guess I'm attributing it to Anne Marie's statement about what we want to do is find the research and make some data decisions, data-driven decisions for the next year. And so I think maybe we all agree on that one. It's just what kind of data and what we want to, where we want to go with that. And I think that one of the things that I was curious about, one piece we don't have is, I thought that the percentage of citizens using the transfer station was only like 15% or something, percent of households. No, the last time I checked, it was I thought somewhere in the vicinity of forty to fifty. Mm -hmm. Oh, forty to fifty. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that that was just a piece of, of information. Yeah. Um, so I think we all agree that we want the research. It's just that we want to get the data on it. The, the, and we don't want to. I think Chris, you have a good point. We don't want to um, gouge our citizens, but at the same time, and I don't think we want to. It's not so much deficit as much as it is what would happen if we raise fees and I think I think there has to be some fee raising whether it's bags or or um, stickers going down the road so we can see what happens a <clears throat> uh, few observations one is um, we're trying to run up an enterprise um, and, a, and a big portion of it is um, we have a better chance of having our revenue match our expenses through volume. And yet, um, we all feel that the right thing to do is to reduce volume. <laughs> and so we're, we're stuck in, in, we're, we're, we're stuck with competing interests in that regard. And, mm -hmm. and, and that leads into the next point, and that is I don't think this operation will ever break even that I don't think we can fix it. Um, and it's it's sort of the nature of the business, and I suspect if we looked at what other communities were doing, if they're charging less than we are, they're probably supporting it somehow through some other source of funds, and we have a competitor in the city that makes our, our challenge a lot harder, too, um, uh, because already they're operating at lower costs. 
to their customers than we are. I don't know how they make it work, but they are operating at lower costs. So, as we discussed at the last meeting, we we can we're going to run at a deficit if we keep our current system and collect more information. Um, we're going to run at a deficit. I feel, you know, perhaps we'll be surprised by the bag sales, but I, I really don't think so. Or we can raise the fees and lose customers and run at a deficit, which is what we project here. So, um, so then that leads to the final point that people are making today, which is uh, with all the other cost increases that we're talking about, should we undertake this one? this year, which is, um, and I was a strong proponent for increasing the uh, sticker fee because I felt that um, we're likely going to be here a year from now looking at this budget, wondering what we should do and what would happen if we increase the sticker fee. Um, at this point, I, I don't feel so strongly that we ought to increase the sticker fee. I, I'd like to because I, my desire to have a new set of data which shows what happens with the increase in fee, I think is something I'd like to see, but not so overwhelmingly that I would object to it if, if we felt that we ought to sort of maintain status quo for another year. The other thing about this budget is that the increase assumes that you didn't lose any customers. Mm. So I mm. think if you increase the fee, you're probably I thought sure. it did. I think it was we needed 20 to retain 2,700 customers, if I remember right, with the math. To get and it. now we have 3,000 or 33? I think we have 3,300 right now. Plus we have some residual second car permits at $5 a piece. It just seems as though if your objective is to, to, you know, decrease your loss, I don't know that that's going to be the objective that you obtain by making that change. Yes. Yeah. Right. You could use it as an experiment, but then the problem is that if you lose the customers, you may not get them back. Uh, all that's valid, and I, and I totally understand that. My, my concern is that we think we want to be thoughtful in terms of our... Um, our, it is called landfill and price, but in terms of our um, waste policy. And I think that part of that was the idea that we don't want to use up all of the funds so that then we don't have the opportunity to build a really nice, for instance, reuse facility or use the funds in a way that increase our capital in how to address this problem. So if we start with the premise that we agree that we have some responsibility of waste in our community, even if we don't have a landfill anymore, but th these are our uh, monies left over from the landfill, how, how can, we must be thoughtful about how we want to do this, whether it is a reuse facility, whether it is um, specific events throughout the year where we have a stable of wonderful volunteers that that help um, promote a, a thoughtful community effort in terms of waste. And if we use up all of our funds and we don't have capital with which to address a thoughtful decision-making process, that's, that's the issue. Not coming out with the profit, not coming out with covering our losses, but with having enough financial resources with which to address a specific plan. So then that comes to the next concept, which is something we had talked about before, which is maybe we need to have a board sub subcommittee talking about what that plan would be going forward to the future. So I think that's it. It's not that we don't want to be thoughtful, but if we use up all of our funds and aren't careful about that, however we make a decision, we want to have a specific philosophy. I think the board wants to have a specific philosophy about waste in our community, even if, if absolutely municipal waste yeah. 
is not something that's required by state law. Yeah. Yes. I don't know if I could respond to that. I think that, I, th I mean, one of the cl conclusions I've come to is that this idea about profitability, and, and Terry uh, really said it eloquently, is that that's not where the city is right now. They, they want this to be revenue neutral, at least. And um, we have to determine whether or not there is citywide the political will to change that. Um, so a broader discussion, I think, is is essential if we're going to have a, 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 a you know a really significant change in policy. I don't think and the I, mayor, and, I, don't and think I would the, support that. I don't think the mayor asked for this to be revenue neutral this year, I, and, I, and the and the options that we're talking about won't achieve it. I'm I'm not I'm not. I am. Uh, that well, was he wants question. us to burn through some of our surplus. Yeah, that was the question that I asked of Terry, sort of rhetorically. The last, the last meeting was, you know, who is this we that's saying that this has to be, you know, I, I want, I want to know who's saying at at the city level that this has to be a revenue neutral operation, and you know, um, once we establish that, we can decide whether or not this is a, a broader discussion that the community ought to have. Um, I think uh, one other one other piece about um, about the mayor and the, and the overall budget with the new enterprise fund being put into place and a number of other factors impacting the overall city budget. I think Susan and the mayor are also looking at this year as sort of a shakedown year for them to figure out how everything is going to come out, and then look at how this transfer station may or may not be. Um, Part of the future. Part of, part of the general fund in the future. So there's a number of moving parts, um, I think, from the mayor's standpoint. Um, I don't think anybody likes to constantly just burning through cash. But, um. the, the kind of, you, you know, I, I like what you said, Ro. I don't like what you said, Chris, too. But I mean, I <laughs> no, I understand that. I, uh, but I like what Ro said, you know, the... the great, <coughs> great minds often differ. If you think of, about going to the city council with a more concrete idea, uh, part of being able to do that would be able to, would be to be able to articulate what we, we have a million dollars. And is the best use of a million dollars to subsidize a losing enterprise for 10 years and then close the thing down as it inevitably will be closed down if the city doesn't step up? Is that the, really the best use of a million dollars? I, I think we need to be able to have an articulate answer to that question before we go to the city council and say, I don't think anybody's saying to burn through all the money. I think uh, I, I understand, but but we're gonna that that is the plan to burn through some of that money this year. The other thing too, I think David is looking at um, other closure costs that might be required to be funded by the general fund if we right. don't have a set aside through the right. um, post closure fund balance. So that's another sort of piece of the puzzle that hasn't yet been resolved. Is you know de what is it decommissioning the gas? Yeah, there are some long-term landfill-related costs that are going to come out of that million bucks. So we're pretty obviously concerned about using any of that money in a sort of a willy-nilly fashion and wasting it. So I, I think what I said is still accurate. We, we have an unsustainable transfer station. And Part, part of starting the conversation along the lines that you'd like is to be able to articulate more precisely what a better use of that money would be. And Partly to close down some more of the... So that's not included in the closure fund? No. Okay. But the closure fund is still sufficient? The closure fund meets the state obligations. There are other obligations that we have that don't, aren't necessarily in the state's requirement list for what the quantity of money in the FAM is. So we're trying to make sure that we cover all the long-term costs, things that may come up in 10 years, 20 years, um, that we don't have money for. And I, I, I wish I could remember who was the person who said it, but it came from that end of the table, whether it was one of you guys or, or, or somebody that was in the room at the time, um, that even if we had extended the life of the landfill, we would only be just barely ahead of the other landfills in the state as far as what the closure date would be. That, that this was, however we approached it, 
this was an unsustainable course of events. We, we, we couldn't we couldn't we couldn't maintain under the under under the current plan um, a, a situation where we were taking care of our own problem without without you know well, I, I think it, uh, under our own resources. It, it was quite a bit more than just barely passed. Yeah, I think it was decades. Oh, no, we're I, talking about 20, 20 plus years of expansion. Right. right. Okay, but that's our. But, but ultimately, you're right. But that's our lifetime, and and um, and and that we need to have again. What well, I, I I don't know where I'm going with this particular line of reasoning. It's just it's just something that struck me. Um, well, you've established our mortality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Twenty years. Okay. Twenty years. <laughs> Clock's running. Yeah. <laughs> If I'm lucky, um, <laughs> but uh, and again, I, I, the point I'm trying to make is I think this brings us back to again this this idea of whether this is a fiscal discussion, which which we guys are are, are you know are are mired in, um, versus a, a, a political discussion in which we would be a participant but are not are not driven by. Hmm. Um, Okay. Yes. So, don't don't we need to uh, give staff some guidance on what we want to oh, see yes. for Sorry. budget? I don't think <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Right. And, I don't think that and would it's be fair. it's yeah. either I think yeah. it's either hold the sticker fee the way it is now yeah. or increase okay. it to fifty dollars and um, and I think that would affect some of the projections yeah. for revenue and. Do we yeah. need a motion? Well, wait, wait, wait. Okay. To finish. Or could I add a second thing if we. If we reduce how much we've affected sticker pricing with regard to helping the 40 to 50 percent of the population that uses the transfer station, maybe increase bag fees to make a point. They won't. It won't replace the sixty thousand dollars that the sticker prices changes in the budget, but it would make a point about that we have to be conscious of our our landfill use. So I would advocate that if we decided as a group to reduce the sticker prices to try to be thoughtful that we raise bag prices and try to have a, some kind of a commitment to thinking about the future of waste in our community even though I mean I don't want to go down the road of the mayor because I think uh, of the mayor reconvening the solid waste because I think that's a lot of, of work, but I think having a, a once a month discussion might be something to think about. So those are two, uh, three things I'm, I'm talking about now in terms of whatever was proposed. That if we do reduce stickers, that maybe we increase um, bag fees and maybe we also make a commitment to try to be thoughtful about where we're going as a community. What philosophy the board wants to have about where we're going this community in terms of waste. Okay, so first issue is to give them some guidance. What about the sticker fee? I'm going to introduce two motions. Um, the first will be that we retain the sticker fee at the current level. Uh, the second will be that we retain the sticker fee at the current level and we increase the bag fee by 25%. Could we make that one motion? Well, all right. No, I, so I, I, want, I want people that I want people right. to have a, a, okay. a, a philosophical. So, first motion is uh, to leave the bank f the the sticker fee unchanged. Right. Is there a second for that? Motion? Second. Okay. Discussion of that. Motion. Okay, discussion. Okay. So, I'm thinking, and I I don't know Robert's rule of order um, that we ought to be clear that our intention is because there's so many other ways in which the population is having to pay this year that while we think we should be doing this, we're not doing it because we're trying to minimize effects on the population. Is that inappropriate in, in a motion? Is, because that, is that making a statement that's too... Well, we can make that statement without it being part of the motion. Right. I think you just did. Yeah. For example. <laughs> so you what, what I think I heard is you're you're uh, you like making that, public yeah. the ju your justification for voting yes. Right. I suppose yes. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I thought that was a well, well described argument. Yeah. I mean, we don't mm -hmm. want to gouge the public. We want to. We're here to protect yeah. the public. I, Your I arguments are always well described. I think I agree with that. David, do you? Have a I, I, we we have to deal with the stickers now. We can choose the time to deal with the bag. In other words, later. Why do you see the difference? Well, because June. Yeah. When do the stickers expire? Oh, you're right. And okay. Yeah. 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 We've yep, got yep. A, an absolute deadline, and we're we're on the yeah. edge of it. I yeah. my 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 thinking was that that since it was all part and parcel of the budget, we wanted to do it together. But but I hear I hear what I, you're saying. I think they should be separate. Okay. But I, they have to be. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, uh, I don't want to get caught up in semantics, but um, I don't want to use the word gouge because um, what we are looking at are costs that we can't cover with our current fee system, and and we're making. I think we're headed to making a decision that we're not going to raise the sticker fee. Um, in consideration of all the other costs increases that the residents are facing this year and um and so i think that that's the purpose i i so i'm i'm comfortable with that as i said earlier although i was a proponent to increase and i'm comfortable with staying where we are i would like to know what the staff thinks about increasing the bag fee um especially in consideration of this desire to sort of collect collect data um, that that isn't affected by other changes. So I've almost started to answer the question. But <laughs> that was that was actually my comment was that if you were gonna look to raise revenue I would raise the sticker fee but not touch the bags. Mm -hmm. Because we're trying to get better data on bag usage. And if we raise the bag fee again we'll have another run on bags and we we'll really have no idea what how many bags people are using. There was a time when we looked at the sticker fee as a way to cover the... Should cover your fixed cost. The fixed cost. Does $25 come close doesn't to doing do that? No, it doesn't. So the, the intellectual rationale for the sticker fee is not met? No. The other thing, the, the other intellectual argument here is that we assume that recycling is free. We have no charge for recycling. Recycling is a significant cost of running this facility and across the universe, nobody charges. Everyone thinks recycling is free, but it's not. It's not. It's only marginally cheaper than good uh, point. landfill. It That's a good point. Only marginally <coughs> cheaper. But no, there you go. does is there any? This is this is purely discussion. It's contrary to the motion, but does it make any sense to consider a smaller increase, going to thirty-five dollars? Just as an experiment, I, it's just fiddling, I guess. But. I, I'd say if 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 our desire is to get a clearer understanding of what our costs and revenues are, then we might as well stay with the same fee structure we have right now. Um, it, as I said earlier, no matter what we do, we're going to run into deficit. Um, I don't think that's awful. I, it's coming out of the revenues generated when the city had to tolerate a landfill. So I think it's it's a return to the residents for what we put up with for all these years. So you're you're beautiful, Mike. And so <laughs> I, I just can't write fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, other than I, 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 if we're not going to try to make a significant change, I just soon say where we are. So and should should we call the question? Yes. All right. So the motion on the table is. Uh, a motion to leave the car vehicle sticker fee at $25. And, and before we uh, vote on that, I'm not going to offer the second motion, uh, the bag the bag one. Okay. So. okay. So yes vote is to leave the sticker fee as is. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And, and is the, so we're, we're projecting now a loss in excess of $100,000. I think easily. I think it was 110 and change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And does that, and do you squeeze what you can out of the, um, excuse me, it was 134,944. Yeah. We've tightened up the payroll as much as can be. The only thing that was in the memo I put out the last one was whether or not we 
We have budgeted for a full-time solid waste planner. Currently, that position is half-time. I think with the events that we're having in the future, I think it, it can be a full-time position. It's a matter of it's in the budget. I'd leave it there. But we're not going to spend that money. Right at the moment, we're not. What do you, you know, I was confused about this when we were first having the discussion. Could you elaborate on the implications if not at the moment? So what we're missing now is what the other um, Karen Bookman used to do was grant work, yeah. writing grants, receiving monies, receiving technical assistance signs for projects in the city like a zero waste program, mm -hmm. things like that that's currently missing. Mm -hmm. Right now we're running the reuse events using Susan Waite and that's really pretty much the extent of it. Mm -hmm. is what we're doing is continuation of the past, but not growth in the future except for the reuse committee itself with the, 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 the landfill and the shed there. Mm -hmm. I mean that's the only thing that's really changing from the past. Yes, Do we have um, a plan for when we would, um, are we going to advertise this as a full-time permanent position at any time in the near future? Um, I would like to, yes. I'm not sure who would be interested in filling the position at the moment. I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that that was the wrong connotation. <laughs> <laughs> um, Unless you're volunteering. It, is, would it be fair to say that you did go right? I have to go. Mm -hmm. I have to go too. Would it be fair or accurate to say that the movement weight is not likely to accept a permanent position at the current time? I don't know. I don't think she knows. She's she's works in Amherst also. Yes, yeah, I know. It. And, and uh, she did say to me that she likes the current setup, but it's not going to last forever. She said, you know, it'll, it'll work for a couple of years. It's it's hard to imagine hiring a full time person with so many unknowns, known unknowns, right, in this system. And, and as I mentioned before, we um, if it particularly to do re, to do grant writing. In my discussions with her, she wasn't particularly hopeful about the outcomes of, of additional revenue for the city for grant writing. I'm just to that. But. I wouldn't sure the additional revenue would be paid for programs that we want to do. Yeah, yeah. And maybe it's even about you. Okay, so are there any other motions on the table? The Rose taking over. One quick question. I, I'm not trying to break things up. I, no, no, I have to go. No, I think we all need to. Yeah. Um, the general fund budget is the same as the one we looked at previously, so there are no changes. Oh. So the one we're going to look at is... There might be some changes because when we met with the mayor, he discussed um, increasing certain line items, but he had a particular interest in one of them with shade trees. Right. Um, so, depending on which line items he wants to increase, that feedback will go into well, the Will we see that before the meeting? Like we I got the other ones? But are we talking tens or twenties or fifties? He thousands? had talked up to maybe 30,000, if I recall correctly. He talked he about that. He wants to do additional tree yeah. planting. Okay. And that would come out of what fund? It would come in the general fund to the streets. Oh, oh, oh general. Okay, that's all right. So we had increased a couple items the last time we talked to Michael about that, that there was $10,000 for like meadows cleanups, trash removal, that we never had before. Originally put in an additional $10,000 for trees that the South West Enterprise Fund used to pay. The mayor wants to increase that from 15000 to maybe twenty-five to 30000 Okay. Like that. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, thank you for your time. Bye. Bye.